The legs of a robot are, to me, one of the most important parts. They need to communicate weight, power and agility all at the same time. And that's exactly why they're so hard to design. So in this video, I'm doing a Mac leg study, revisiting some old techniques and trying a few unexpected ideas along the way. Welcome to Cut, Transform Glue the best material to figure out the size and geometry of a robot's legs is cardboard it's cheap easy to find and you can cut it with a simple pair of scissors i'll be using a snap knife just because it's faster a metal roller and also a marker first i'll find some parallel lines which will make my life much easier when i start cutting it freely no measurements needed, I'll just use the width of the roller. And once I have these clean and precise strips of cardboard, I can start with the creative process using hot glue. First defining the basic geometry of the legs, like figuring out where the joints are. And for this project, I went with my favorite joint configuration, this S-shaped leg. With that figured out, I could start adding more shapes, because the idea now is to make it look cool and robust. I did that by cutting and adding more pieces of cardboard. And this is what I've got, a leg with three main segments, top, middle and bottom, almost like a human leg, but with an extra joint in the middle, for a total of four joints if you include the foot. Now to build this in three dimensions, I'll be using plywood, and on that front, I have some big news. I've always wanted to get a bandsaw, it would speed up my scratch building process so much, but as you probably know, here in Brazil, tools can be very expensive. And that's when a very generous subscriber reached out to me, offering to help fund this tool. Rick, an old breed United States Marine, a Christian and an artist, as he describes himself, made this possible, so I really wanted to give him a proper shout out here. Thank you so much much my friend. <laughs> yeah, I was very excited. Just like I did with the cardboard, I threw some parallel lines onto the plywood. At first, I thought I cut them freely by hand and used those as a guide. But then I remember that the tool came with a fence, which is much more reliable, so I used that instead. In a matter of minutes, I had a bunch of precisely cut sticks of plywood. Sticks that I could cut and combine into more intricate shapes. It also came with this angle cutting jig right here. I'm pretty sure this is not the right name of the thing, but yeah, this is going to be very helpful for the channel because nothing screams sci-fi more than 45 degrees chamfered edges. From there, as you can imagine, I spent pretty much the entire day cutting and gluing pieces of plywood, trying to match what I had done with the cardboard, and it was a fun process.
this point I found this nice, a thinner piece of wood and use it to craft more delicate parts. of that workday I had the basic structure of this leg study ready to be detailed. Ok, so we went from a quick cardboard test to a complex wooden model with working joints. Now it's time to add some details and take this to the next level. And for that, the best choice is some good old keyboard keycaps. I have a huge collection of those. The idea here is to add intricate details, make it look cool and hide the imperfections of the wood. The end grain of the plywood really shows, especially this one full of air pockets. And also, whenever possible, it's a good idea to hide the seams, where I attached two different pieces together. But whatever I feel like it, I'm going back to the bandsaw, removing material here and there. The end grain of this wood was pretty bad, but it was reclaimed from a dumpster, so Free stuff is free stuff, I guess. The different colors and textures of the wood make it really hard to read the shapes, so I threw on a first coat of primer. Now, of course, using wood has its pros and cons, and one of the cons is its texture. The primer really shows it. The good thing is that it's super easy to sand, and I'm not entirely sure why, but sanding primer on wood feels much easier than on plastic. While, of course, still pretty messy. What's also very easy to do with wood is chamfering the edges, that can be done with a simple snap knife. On ABS that would be a lot harder, and on acrylic that would be actually a nightmare. The only thing that it requires is some steady hands, you can always fix your mistakes and adjust the angles with a bit of sanding. The leg was already looking pretty cool, if I may say so myself, but since we're having so much fun with wood, I decided to take a little trip down the memory lane and broke out some good old laser cut MDF pieces. Remember those from back in the day? It still has some of that burnt resin smell from the laser and it definitely brings back some memories. But yeah, let's grab some shapes and have some fun with it. almost like playing with Legos. But yeah, then I grabbed my Dremel with a spherical bit and made some divots all around the leg. I applied then the final coat of primer and the quickest wash ever, and here it is, from cardboard to an almost complete model, a quick Mac leg study. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this quick practice session, should I do this more often, and if so, what should be my next project? I'm pretty sure that now with the bandsaw I have a ton of ideas to test. Thanks again to Rick for the support, to all my patrons of course, and thank you for watching. <music>